I went to school for painting and drawing. I thought I'd have like a bit of a studio practice and a job like everyone plans on doing when they get out of school. And then I think I like made a series of choices, like conventional choices. Like I wanted to get married and I had a kid. And that kind of put me in a situation where I wasn't able to really work. It came down to, for me, like I can work in the arts and take all of my salary that I make and have pay somebody to babysit and watch my child. Or I can take time off of work and stay at home. It was a choice, but it's also like a non-choice. The work for me comes from I think about, you know, all the reasons why I couldn't make the work and then those things became what the work was about and sort of documenting this time and this care. And I think there are issues too of me thinking about what it means, you know, sort of invisible labor and emotional labor, which are tend to be very gendered things as well. Those take up time and making those part of the practice of what my work's about. It's more a documentation, I feel like. I mean, cause that's one of the things that I'm interested in was not creating, but just showing, you know, what these situations are. I think like so much of social media and what people are showing on their phones and in their feeds are sort of these like idealized versions of domesticity. The posts were like becoming so ridiculous. And I'm like, who are these people? And maybe I desire to be one of them, I don't know. There's a little bit of me that it wants to show just exactly well, my perception of the actual day to day and sort of these feelings of distance and distraction that I experience um, in the everyday. So what sort of became part of my practice is this documenting of what happens in daily life. Um, around the house. And I was particularly interested in sort of capturing and using my phone as a tool for capturing these moments when people are next to you in the room but aren't necessarily paying attention. So a lot of the images that I capture are people and, and children looking at screens and being asleep or, you know, these small situ intimate situations where you have people all scrunched together on the couch, but they're all focused in some other way, like capturing those. And I tried to do it at first covertly, but I think now everyone knows like that's part of my process. So it's not a super secret, but I do try to capture it. Uh, images and stuff when they're not looking as opposed to like, you know, directly at the camera. It was the painter Fairfield Porter who said, love is paying attention. And in my process, I think about that quote with his work. Um, here I am watching and monitoring every, you know, 
move that my family makes, turning these into drawings and then paintings or textiles. And the way that I'm capturing them is by using my telephone, thereby like removing myself in a way from sort of the attention of the actual situation. I think about like taking this device, which is something that really um, separates us and divides our attention, and then using that to sort of capture what is happening in my own home. It's like a way of, for me, embracing that thing that I didn't want to be defined as and making work about it like the everyday because um, there isn't, I think, a lot of work which doesn't sort of romanticize parenthood and sort of the domestic relationships and the domestic happening. And in fact, I think like a lot of it is, you know, especially if a woman makes it, it's not the kind of, of work that's supposed to be recognized with any sort of value. I just don't have much, a huge studio history. So like coming to the figure has been completely new to me. I think the only thing that is very similar is like my interest in sort of graphically rendering something else, like these photos, and then sort of using those drawings to make you know, the final product. While I have appreciation for people that paint, like Fairfield Porter, I don't like think like I'm anywhere in the same. I feel like those are painters that love paint and I feel like I'm actually a painter that's scared of paint. Very restrained with like applying it and there's almost sort of like a frugality in the background that, you know, is like, oh, not too much. I guess I don't feel that way as much with yarn, so maybe that approach is a little bit different. So basically how this works is it has this needle and it injects the yarn through the fabric. So you have to have like an open weave fabric that you can, um, so it has to be something specialized for rug making. So you can't use canvas or anything. Um, so like monk's cloth, or this is called primary backing cloth. So that's basically what the hand tool does, except it does it way faster. But with a hand tool, I can vary the height so much more and pull out individual stitches. One of the reasons I picked this as sort of like a mode of, uh, creating was because I felt like you could draw with it and you could get gestural and you could kind of move around. I do think one thing about using a commercial grade rug tufting gun is that you are going to lose control. And so it's, it's a machine, but it's not like a super accurate machine. And sometimes it just like vomits large amounts of you know, yarn through the textile weave. And so I've sort of decided that that's just part of the process and just to go with it and let it and let it sit and not be so fussy about, you know, like trying to control that sort of aspect of it. I do think that is sort of an interesting result of working in fiber for me. I don't think of myself as a crafter because there's this sort of level of meticulousness that I think goes with craft. But when I see stuff like this, I can get certainly like very compulsive about the, the details of which I guess maybe that is where the craft part comes in. I don't know. So I'm using now um, both hand tools like these punch needles and and then I use the gun um, which works pretty fast but you know can cause it has its own like different effects and you know 
uh, textures and stuff. This is almost all hand done just because I wanted to have more control over over a lot of the areas, which you kind of lose that with the rug tufting gun. I still view the rugs as paintings. I still feel like I'm a painter. I feel like I'm a better painter, not painting with paint though, <laughs> because I just, I mean, maybe there's just something less precious to me about the yarn, or maybe it's something that I've had so much practice with in like my day to day that I feel so much more comfortable. I am still playing around, I, I mean, with the idea of can we present them in other ways other than stretching them on a stretcher. But even if they're not on a stretcher, they're still up off the floor. They're not utilitarian in that aspect, regardless of whether they're on stretcher bars or they're just flapping in the breeze hung on a wall. They're still paintings to me. Part of the piece that I'm working on with the embroideries comes from finding like second wave feminism embroideries like from the 1960s through like the early 90s and some of them I have like reimagined myself into and have embroidered myself like into the pieces and then a lot of them are just collecting sort of these sort of messages that we grew up with about um, being a mother, being a parent, being a hostess, being a homemaker, um, being a working woman, and sort of finding a way in that or like examining myself through that. Because I do feel like a lot of my criticism of myself came from that movement. There, there's still a lot of work to be done, I think, in terms of feminism and motherhood. And I'm hoping like that next wave kind of addresses those sorts of issues. That's what I think is interesting, is trying to find where you fit in in that. Just like trying to find like where I fit in as like, being a parent or a wife or being an artist, you know, how any of those things fit in together. How, you know, how, how do they work together when there's really no great examples of, you know, um, women with children, visible children um, in contemporary art. to keep it up by running in place Tried to keep my cool but all the blood went in my face Hi, I'm Nina Chanel Abney. I'm an artist. I'm from Matson, Illinois, and now I work and live in Jersey City. I never sketch, so I had no idea what it was going to look like. So I started, I order the spray paint. I just kind of get a bunch of different colors that I think I might use. I decided for them to paint the background black before I got there. And then I just start taping off different shapes, and that's how I start. I might reference some other um, murals I've done, but overall I don't know what it's going to look like. It's really intuitive at this point. It's just the feeling of what colors feel right next to each other. Improvisation is a big part of my process because I don't plan anything out and I'm usually responding to something as I put it on the canvas. Important for me 
to give people options. Like, I don't want to be boxed in, so I don't want the figures to be boxed in. You know, I want to be able to raise a bunch of different questions and possibilities, and I don't want one just one set answer for the work I'm doing. Yeah, well, I feel like I've been working that way uh, since, I guess, since the beginning, when I pretty much when I switched the races of my classmates. So it's just been an overall progression of mixing gender and, and race and the figures. Um, I don't know, I kind of found, like, if I, when I was doing portraits, if just because the figure might be black or white, the paintings are automatically read in a very specific way. So if I mix and match the races, no one could necessarily attach one specific whatever meaning to that painting or something onto that particular figure. The symbols came out of like uh, interest and emojis and a way to abbreviate other things I was talking about in work. So um, before I had like some positive feedback about my work, I could simplify something just by shape even if it was a nose, it didn't have to be like a well-rendered nose, but everyone gets that it's a nose. So from there, I wanted to kind of create symbols that could mean multiple things, but everyone could have put a definition to it, and it'd be something simple. So that's where the stencils kind of come from, so a heart. But then I'm, I like that I could use it in different ways, or depending on where I place it, it creates a whole different context. And then for the spray paint colors, yeah, I usually, like, I need, like, these <laughs> three different shades of brown and, I don't know, different skin tones when I'm doing the figures. I have a lot of texting going on with my friends. <laughs> the nail polish emoji and the poop ice cream emoji, those are my favorites. I mean, early on, I... I wanted to find a way to still keep a sense of humor in the work because I knew, you know, some of the topics I would touch. And so it was important for me to like, still keep my sense of humor, uh, lightheartedness, even if it was kind of deceptive. I n always knew I wanted to be an artist, but I never, I never knew what that actually looked like and really never could have imagined this. So even, I guess, when I see my work in a museum, I'm like, oh, it's just one of my paintings. I, I really don't necessarily see what, what someone else would, who just walks into the museum would see. It's interesting for me to look at it and try to put myself in that place again when I was making it. And the revelation I had is I feel like I couldn't return to that way of working. I feel like I've gone intuitively and just like the natural progression of my hand and what I gravitate towards over time. And there are things in some of the earlier works that I would want to maybe incorporate now, but I don't know if I could even paint like that. <laughs> I'm curious of, I guess, there were, what everyone's response will be. I hope it's anger. I hope it's a, a mix of <laughs> reactions. Like I'm, I'm more um, concerned I'm not concerned, but I really want my work to be able to still be relevant to what's happening now, despite the time when I made it could, could have been responding to something completely different. But that's what I want for my work, to always kind of remain relevant no matter what's happening. So I'm hoping it could be read in an entirely new way. I feel like anyone could be an artist. <laughs> I mean, they could still go home and create or find an outlet to express themselves. So I would just say, just do it.